Well, hey there, everybody. Today we have a video of how to repair a Canon Dial 35 camera, specifically the uh, film advance mechanism. I'll do a brief overview of the camera first. Um, if you already know about this camera or uh, just want to skip to the repair, uh, there's a link below in the description. Uh, it'll take you there. Um, a little bit of history behind this camera. The uh, there were two models available: the uh, Canon Dial 35, which was re released in uh, 1963. It was also badged as the Bell and Howell slash Canon Dial 35, and then uh, the Canon Dial 35-2, which was released in 1968 uh, and uh, rebadged as the Bell and Howell Dial 35. An uh, easy way to tell the difference between the two is the Dial 35-2 has this uh, plastic badge above the dial, and the original Dial 35 has the uh, name stamped into the camera. This is a, an aluminum-bodied camera with uh, rubber grips around the edges. Uh, it has an f 2.8, 28mm lens. It is a uh, shutter priority. So uh, you set the shutter speed. You have four options using this dial here, and then it automatically adjusts the aperture. The uh, light meter is a cadmium sulfide. And it hides around between behind this little dial. Uh, lens there uh, at around the two o'clock meter. The uh, ISO is set using the dial, the namesake dial, and uh, you may be able to see the uh, it, high, it puts masks over the uh, meter to adjust for the film speed. Uh, the, shutter, the focus lever is here on top, uses a, a zone focusing system Shutter release button on the front, film counter, and this is a manual uh, override for the automatic exposure. So you pull that knob and you can adjust the uh, aperture using the knob. The, there were uh, a couple differences between the, the Dial 35 and the Dial 35-2, where that was released five years later. I'll refer to this as a Dial 35-2 for all intents and purposes. It's just rebadged. Uh, the improvements made for between the two models, uh, the uh, Dial 35-2 has a hot shoe. Uh, it has an integrated wrist strap. The Dial 35-1 had one that attached to the uh, tripod socket and it's uh, most often missing. The ISO on the dial 35.2 goes from uh, 10 to 1,000. Maybe we'll see that. The original dial 35 goes from 8 to 500. The uh, clockwork spring motor here on the bottom uh, is upgraded uh, slightly on the dial 35.2 to, uh, to power about 20 uh, exposures. Inside, uh, you have a, uh, the film compartment. It's a half frame 35 millimeter camera, so it shoots uh, two frames per standard 35 millimeter exposure. Uh, this particular one takes a uh, 1.35 volt mercury battery, uh, which are unavailable at the moment for obvious reasons, uh, but uh, they do make replacements. They look kind of like this. Um, little flying saucer battery. This, this one in uh, particular is a 1.5 volt, which is the incorrect voltage for correctly powering the light meter, but uh, it will work in a pinch here for testing and demonstration purposes. The uh, battery is different on the original Dial 35. Uh, placement uh, is also slightly different as well. Uh, this does have a flash sync port, uh, which allows you to use a um, 
the uh, they have single bulb single flash bulb uh, attachments here of five flash quint that holds five bulbs and then a, a flash cube attachment as well for flashes the uh, clockwork spring motor down here uh, is a film advance and also the rewind mechanism when you rotate this button and press in it uh, switches the orientation of the gears and transfers the energy to wind the film backwards back into the can film canister now this uh, when it's uh, not loaded this is the uh, the appropriate way it should work um, but oftentimes this uh, clockwork spring motor uh, since these cameras are 50 plus years old the clock the grease in the clockwork spring motor uh, can get gummed up and uh, cause the motors to stop functioning properly there's a little bit of a resistance that feels a little bit gummy uh, on this so I'm going to be removing the clockwork spring motor and lubricating it. Uh, the way this camera works is you load the 35 millimeter film into the camera. You can see the uh, gear right there that engages the sprocket holes, uh, which also winds the shutter. You close it, the exposure, wind it to the exposure window, reads zero. And then you hear a click, it stops advancing, and then you're just adding power to the spring motor. You wind it until it races, which means it has a full spring charge. There it goes. Now you can turn it, and it does no, it does no, no longer uh, winds the spring. Uh, to make an exposure, you just press the button, and it automatically advances to the next frame. Since this is a half frame camera, you can take 72 images on a 35, uh, 36 uh, exposure to 35 millimeter roll, uh, which is pretty cool because you can just snap away with uh, that much uh, concern about wasting film. Um, this clockwork spring motor, like I said, uh, manufacturer says about 20 pictures per wind. And uh, as you can here it's it's starting to getting a little labored as it uh, it the mechanism is gumming up and so um, also to rewind it you wind it and if you can't hear that it's just kind of chunking along getting getting bound up and uh, So it's, it's not and then the, the there's spring tension still left in here but it's not actually winding the film back very well so that goes a little bit um, so uh, I'm gonna let this sit for a minute uh, let uh, some of the spring tension release out of here so uh, when we take it off it doesn't uh, release all of it at once and kick so I'll uh, cut away bring it back and we'll start on the uh, repair okay uh, I decided while we're waiting up uh, I'll show you what it looks like in the viewfinder oh also for those interested this aftermarket uh, lens cap is a 48 millimeter uh, we'll put the uh, I'll put the battery in to show you the uh, demonstrate the automatic uh, aperture Put it in the positive side down. One drawback of the uh, battery being inside the case is these uh, zinc air batteries don't last nearly as long as the mercury uh, batteries do. So if the battery dies, uh, you're stuck with manual exposure unless you open it up in a dark bag or dark room. So let's uh, get into the viewfinder here. Okay, well, it's extraordinarily difficult to get the, the camera positioned where you can actually see into the viewfinder, but I got it here. Uh, on the left, here you would see the uh, 
the focusing scale and uh, if I adjust the focus on the camera you'll see a needle move back and forth and then down at the bottom here you can see the, the needle for the aperture if it's in the red ranges then the exposure won't be correct this is f2.8 uh, 5.6 11 and 22 readings down there uh, the blue on the bottom here is the for zone focusing when you set the needle arm um, on the on the focus to the blue picture of this little family we have a mountain family and then a head uh, for you know portrait close so if we set the the view to the little family setting which is uh, corresponds to about uh, 10 feet uh, about you know maybe three meters approximately uh, on the uh, focusing dial and the uh, exposure needle is in within the the blue there uh, then the entire image will be in focus uh, and then we can adjust the shutter speed to uh, vary the the needle there so and as you can see the uh, <laughs> the light in here is a little too low but um, hope it gives you an, an idea of what uh, how this if you find it works the there's a little frame uh, guide along the corners here uh, the uh, viewfinder is upgraded here on the dial 35 2 had some colors for the zone uh, focusing system to help you out to make it a little simpler taking pictures but anyway that's that's what it looks like in the viewfinder and uh, we'll get to the repair now all right uh, I've got all the spring tension released from the uh, clockwork motor here uh, you can see it's, it's pretty gummy it's supposed to turn smoothly and uh, it's binding up so uh, what we need to do is remove the clockwork motor if you can't get all the spring tension out if yours is too gummed up uh, just be advised that when you remove this clockwork motor it will release all the spring tension at once and uh, kick with a bunch of torque and it may strip out some gears uh, but um, just be careful there so uh, what we need to do to get this motor off is uh, remove the set screws uh, right here you can see right above the clockwork motor you got this tiny uh, regular screw there uh, that is holding the motor on to the body so remove the set screw one keep that somewhere safe and uh, uh, threw me here uh, the first time I was doing this was uh, there's a second one in the hole so make sure your screwdriver is long enough you got to get down in there and find the second one get that guy out of there as well there's number two Hopefully, we'll just be able to unscrew the motor from the body, but uh, we'll see if that happens. Okay, finally broke it loose. I, I took a bit of fighting, uh, but uh, what I ended up having to, having to do was pull down away from the, the uh, body on the motor uh, while turning left and it eventually uh, broke free. Uh, if, you, if you can't get it free, what you need is a little tiny, really flat um, wrench that goes in there. I think it's an 18.2 millimeter wrench. It's a specialty tool, so uh, here we go. Now, the, since the spring tension is uh, released, there's, it's not kicking at all. and uh, you can see inside the your clockwork motor here and all the interesting gear parts. It's an automaton. 
<laughs> and uh, I don't know if you can see, but um, the gear on the right, it's got a bunch of gunk on it. Uh, so what we got to do is we got to clean up the old grease and uh, hit it with some uh, fresh lubricant. And to do that, I'm going to use uh, lighter fuel, oh, lighter fluid. You know, this is just um, it's just naphtha, you know, like Zippo fluid. But um, yep, what I'll do is I'll put it on a uh, Q-tip and just swab it out in there. Dissolve as much as this old grease as possible. The um, I like I like using lighter fluid naphtha because. Uh, because it uh, dries with uh, little to no residue. Other cleaners may uh, actually have residue. So, also be careful not to leave a bunch of little cotton fibers in there. That'll kind of gum, gum up your mechanism too. Um, so uh, you can't reach it all, but uh, you, what you can do is kind of put it back in there and try to advance it a little bit, get to a new spot on the on the gears, and continue wiping. So I'll do that for a while and then uh, bring it back and we'll lubricate it. All right, uh, and it also turns out you can actually just move it with a Q-tip, advance the gears with the Q-tip while you're wiping. So just uh, turn and wipe and try to remove all as much of this old, uh, old grease as you can. Now, when it's satisfactory cleaned, satisfactorily cleaned, you can hit it with some lubricant. All right, uh, so I got as much as the grease out that I could, uh, and even before lubrication, you can see how uh, much smoother it's run. It's uh, rotating. So, uh, we'll. Uh, what I'm going to do is hit it with some. Um, Graphite lubricant in there. I probably want to use it sparingly. I don't you know, soak the camera in it, but uh, you know, enough to kind of coat things. Maybe I'll uh, shoot a little bit into here, into the spring motor too, for good measure. And uh, kind of run it in and Spin it around for a little bit. Get the gears uh, lubricated. Definitely smoother. All right. So. There's a little bit of excess, so maybe I'll uh, dab that off uh, so it's not just uh, dripping, and uh, we'll put it back together. All right, so for reassembly, uh, there is a spot on the uh, a witness mark on the threads where the uh, set screw was sitting. See right there. So it's the only spot on the threads that was that's uh, has a mark on it. So uh, we're going to try to line that up with the hole on the, uh, for the set screws. Maybe a little flashlight to see if we can match it up, but uh, that's what our goal is. And then uh, we'll put the set screws back in. And I'll have to get a flashlight to check for that. All right, and can't quite see in, into that hole, but the flashlight. But what I ended up doing was scribing a little mark on that uh, that little uh, hex nut around the base of the motor, and it's uh, in a position where that set screw mark is uh, right by the hole. So uh, we'll just put the uh, set screws back in there and uh, set them back down. Number 
one. So, now it's uh, nice and snug, won't turn backwards, and uh, let's test it out with a roll of film, eh? smoother now, doesn't it? Hey, look at that. Over 20 exposures. 25, about 20, maybe 27, something like that. Wind it back up. See how the rewind does. functioning again. Well, anyway, thanks for watching. I'll post a uh, link to the where you can get uh, these uh, old batteries, the 1.35 volt batteries. You can uh, see so your cadmium sulfide uh, light meter will uh, function properly. I'll also post a link uh, to the uh, repair manual. PDF you can download online for both the uh, Dial 35 and Dial 35 too. If you have any questions, leave them in the uh, comments below and I'll try to answer them for you. Hit subscribe for uh, more vintage and how-to videos and we'll see you next time. Good luck and happy shooting. Put this battery in uh, positive side down. and. Uh, Finder here. It's uh, is wow. It's difficult. Oh. Piece of film here. Leader torn. Film leader. Damn it. <laughs>